Sanctuary, we're going to go ahead and get started this evening. Uh, turn to page number 102. Page 102, if you'd stand with me, we're going to sing, He Hideth My Soul. Page 102.
Brother Jeremy, good to see you all this evening. Welcome to our services tonight. Let's begin with a word of prayer. And uh, Brother Dennis, if you would, sir. Week, Lord, to get fed and, and uh, you know learn more about you, Lord. And Father, I just uh, pray for tonight the little ones downstairs, Lord. You'll uh, just uh, encourage those little ones and uh, be with the teachers, Lord, as they present the uh, message tonight, also, Lord. And uh, just give us a good night tonight. I just pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Please be seated. I oh, just want to say thank you. I know a lot of folks took care of a lot of things this weekend whilst uh, we were out of town. I do greatly appreciate that. We was, uh, I was way up north in New York and uh, went to, um, found a small Baptist church to attend, a landmark free will Baptist church. I thought that was an interesting name, and so uh, we certainly enjoyed it. Last, uh, not too many landmark churches uh, that I've ever found actually know what landmarkism is. This guy actually knew what it was, and so that was interesting, but uh, it was enjoyable services and enjoyed the preaching. And uh, I got to hear some of the preaching from here live streamed, and uh, I do want to say thank you for everybody that took care of things whilst we were out of town. Such a blessing uh, to be able to do that and get away. Um, really have no announcements for tonight. Right to our memory verse, another song, and then I get to preach. We're starting a new series tonight. Uh, I'm going to go on for just a couple of weeks, and uh, concerning the church, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4 this evening, but uh, Brother Stephen, if you would please. Okay, Philippians chapter 2, real quick. Still looking at our verse for May, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Philippians 2, 3 and 4. And if you're there, you can read that nice and loud with me. It says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Anybody been working on that? Hasn't gone yet? wants to give that a go tonight, feel free. No, not tonight. That's all right. Still time. Jeremy? All right. We're going to stay in the same spot, just one page over, page 103, Under His Wings. If you would stand with me, we'll sing that, Un Under His Wings. <laughs>
Haven't sang that song in a very long time. Took me all three stanzas before I caught on. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, if you would please. Ephesians chapter 4. We finished a series uh, last these last two weeks. Had a kind of a recap last, uh, last Thursday, but... Uh, uh, series um, concerning the book of Acts, and, and over the next couple of weeks, um, I'm guessing maybe three or four, well, we'll see. Uh, anyway, I want to talk about um, the church, and uh, as you can see in your outline tonight, Ephesians chapter 4. Um, I, of course, love uh, Ephesians 4. If you'll notice on, on the top there, it says uh, 11 through 13. That's what I'm going to read tonight to get started with, and then we're going to be dropping back just a little bit and picking up a few other verses here in Ephesians 4. But I love this portion of Scripture. If you've been around New Testament Baptist Church any length of time, you often hear me using that phrase, the work of the ministry. And uh, this particular portion of Scripture, uh, the Lord just burdened my heart with this verse of Scripture as our ministry got started uh, 27 years ago. And I was really just really seeking the Lord's direction and guidance as far as the direction of what, what, you know, what the, I'd never pastored a church before. I was kind of clueless in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things they don't teach you in Bible college. And so I was really asking God for some things and he laid this verse upon my heart. I just haven't gotten over it yet in all these years. But uh, if you would please, let's all stand. I'm going to read these couple verses of scripture to get started with. But Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to begin in verse number 11 and it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. What a blessing it is to be able to spend this time together uh, this evening uh, here in our uh, Bible study and prayer meeting. And I do pray, Lord, that you would encourage us uh, in the work that you've given us to do here at New Testament Baptist Church. And Father, I just pray as we speak about uh, a gifted church tonight, I pray, Lord, that you would help uh, every one of us who are part of this ministry to understand the part that each plays in the work itself. And now, Father, that you would teach us tonight and guide us in all truth, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, you know, this great verse of Scripture is talking about the church. It's talking about the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I believe that's a progressive statement that's there. You know, one leads to the other for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It's progressive. You know, of course, there's a couple things that are mentioned there. Individuals talking about the apostles uh, that are mentioned and the prophets. Uh, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And so uh, myself personally, when I look at that, uh, and that's what the Lord really burdened my heart about as a pastor, I'd never been a pastor before. And I'm asking the Lord, what do you, what do you, what do you want me to do? Um, and that, that verse was really laid upon my heart. And so my ministry um, has always been that desire to perfect the saints, to help the children of God that are part of this church to grow and to mature and to be everything that God wants them to be in order to do the work of the ministry. And so um, that is really what my burden has been. But as we're talking about the church, and we're going to be talking about the church, and it's centered around this portion of Scripture, yes, and some other things here in the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. But as we're talking about the, the, the ministry here, the ministry of the New Testament Baptist Church and any one of the Lord's churches is not a one-man show. It's not like the pastor and teacher, that, he does all the work and then, you know, everyone else just kind of enjoys and, uh, you know, and, and is benefited from it. But that's, that's not it at all. We're going to talk about tonight the gifted church. And so I, I, you'll notice there in our outline, uh, I have it directed back to a couple of verses in verse number 7 and 8. It says... Um, it says uh, here in Ephesians chapter 4, but in every one of us, now I just want to stop for just one moment and just say again, every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up uh, on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, 
What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth, and he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And then that verse of Scripture where we started, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And so this discussion about this blessing of giving things to the church begins with a statement concerning all of us and, and that each one of us has been given a, a given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now that particular verse of scripture is a quote from an Old Testament passage. And if you would, please, I think I've run it down. Yeah, I really did. Uh, in Psalm 68, if you'd go back there to Psalm 68, I've got it typed out in my, in my notes here, but, uh, but Psalm 68 is one of the Psalms of David, and he is discussing the victories that God had brought into his life, and the, it's, uh, it's a lengthy psalm, but particularly the quote comes from there, and I'm going to read um, verses 17 through 19, so it kind of picks up the beginning uh, and afterwards, but uh, in verse number 7, um, this is Psalm 68, verse number 17, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. And again, this is one of the Psalms of David. And David is writing and he says, Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. And this particular psalm, again, is talking about God's victories and what God has brought. Just as David was victorious over his enemies, the Lord Jesus Christ was victorious. Uh, even though he went to the cross, even though he died, he was victorious over the, over the grave. He was victorious over, over death itself. Ultimately, our greatest enemy is death, as the Bible tells us in, in 1 Corinthians. And ultimately, for all of us, that enemy will be defeated. But Christ defeated death as far as himself goes. He died and then rose again from the dead. And so as a part of that victory, though, there is spoils. Now, I just want to say this. As a matter of fact, I was doing my Bible reading this morning, and I, was, um, I just started the book of Judges, and that quote is in the book of Judges also. If you're familiar with um, uh, Deborah and Barak, uh, some of the judges of the nation of Israel, the song of Deborah and Barak, and I'm just reading from Judges 5.12. I'll just read this, and it says, Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abba Noam. And, and so you, you see the same... Uh, thing mentioned there that I believe as far as I could tell they're the only two instances in the Old Testament where that phrase is used and then of course it's then repeated uh, in in the uh, here in the book of Ephesians and so uh, here here we have this uh, again this idea of victory of course Deborah and Barak led uh, the armies of Israel um, against um, uh, against the um, Oh, was that the, um, uh, it's not the Moab, no, it wasn't the Moabites, the Moabites with Gideon. So whoever that was, that they led, they got Sisera with the nail through the head. What a great bedtime story for children. But anyway, that, uh, that is that whole incident of victory. And, and you, again, you see the idea of, of victory and the spoils of war. And that's what that's about. And so the, the giving of the gifts are now that we have conquered an enemy, we have something to benefit, not just, not just for the victor himself, not just for David, or not just for Deborah and Barak, but the, the giving of the gifts, the benefit are for all. All the nation of Israel benefited from the victories of David. All the nation of Israel benefited from the victories of Barak and Deborah. All of God's children benefit from the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And part of that benefit is the giving of gifts. He uses that, quotes that, and then begins to talk about the benefits of these gifts given to the church. 
I want to um, direct your attention to the Gospel of, of John, John chapter 7, if you would please. John chapter 7. Looking at verse number um, 37, I'm going to read down just a couple verses. John 7, 37 says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then the comment is made in verse number 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So we have this connection between the giving of the Holy Spirit and the, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, his resurrection, and ultimately his ascension, and the empowering or the giving of the Spirit of God. And so what we have is a reminder that after the victory that Jesus Christ wrought through the cross and through the grave, then the, the gift of the Spirit of God would be given. Here in John, just turn with me a few pages to John chapter 14. Here's Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples in John 14. I would draw, I invite you to look at verse number 12, just the one verse. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. It's throughout these pages in this discussion that Jesus Christ is having with his disciples, he reminds them that it's expedient for you that I go away, because if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. And he's speaking about this gift of the Spirit of God, this great and wonderful empowering for the Lord's church and the work of the Spirit of God in, the, in, in individual believers. You know, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God was with people. And now in the New Testament period of time that we live in, the Holy Spirit is in us. What a difference that is. And that's, that's you know, the empowering that the Spirit gave in the Old Testament could be given and could be taken away. But the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us and will, it will never be taken away. What a great and precious gift that is. You know, the church is gifted because God's people are gifted. We have received the Spirit of God. We have been empowered as a church and we have been indwelt as individual believers. And, and so we're going we're gonna to spend uh, the rest of the time tonight over in 1 Peter. And if you would, please go with me to 1 Peter chapter 4. Now, a lot of discussion about spiritual gifts, of course, are, are, are given by the Apostle Paul. And there are church epistles that Paul wrote. He, sp he speaks about them in Romans. He speaks about them in Ephesians. He speaks about them in, in 1 Corinthians. And, and, but here in 1 Peter is really where I want to get started at with this discussion about the, the gift at church. And we're going to be looking at some other passages over the next couple of weeks. But in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, if you would please, we're going to look at uh, a couple of verses here. Do I have it down there? I do. Verses number 10 and 11. In your outline, please notice that. It says, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as, as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it with the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so here Peter uh, is talking about the gift. Now, I, I find it interesting, again, now, uh, now mainly, as, as I've already said, mainly uh, Paul is the one who talks about spiritual gifts. And here Peter is speaking about it. And he uses the term the gift. And I, I think that's very interesting that he does that. Um, it's, it's, it's singular. It's not, it's not plural. Um, 
Now, the reason I believe it's that, because I do believe in spiritual gifts, plural, okay? And, and so when the Bible speaks about gifts, it's often referred to as plural. But here Paul uses, excuse me, Peter uses it as singular. So what I think the emphasis here is the connection with the, with the, with the Holy Spirit. It's linked to the Holy Spirit. It is the gift. It's a package deal. It's a re, to me, it's a reminder that when you receive the Holy Spirit, then you receive the gift or gifts that are associated with it. And they're, they're not, they're inseparable. And so I, I, some of the things that we'll talk about over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about spiritual gifts. We're going to talk about things. We're, I mean, there is a difference between a spiritual gift and a talent. A lot of people have talents. And talents are not spiritual gifts. But I do believe that talents are given by God more generally, and they can be developed and such as that. Uh, many years ago, um, we had some, uh, there were some friends of ours um, in our church in Delaware, and he was, uh, he was a school teacher. Matter of fact, uh, Mr. Eshelman just passed away this past week, and uh, his funeral uh, was over the weekend. And so, um, but he was, a, he, was a, he was a very gifted teacher, taught uh, chemistry, uh, high school chemistry uh, for, uh, for years, I don't know, 30-some years there in, in Delaware. Um, wonderful teacher. Him and I had a discussion at one time uh, about spiritual gifts. And, you know, he had told me, he said, you know, I'm a teacher, but that doesn't mean I have a spiritual gift to be a teacher, to teach. Because, you know, learning to teach is a, is a talent. It's a great skill. And, but to have the gift of teaching by the Spirit of God is not the same as learning how to be a teacher. And him and I had that discussion many, many years ago, you know, 40, 40 years ago. Um, he was a good teacher, but he never thought himself to be a gifted teacher as far as the Spirit of God. And I'll never forget those discussions because it reminded me that when God, through his Holy Spirit, extends a particular gift to an individual... It is not necessarily something they've been trained for or something they've always excelled at or something that they're even excited about, so to say. And I'm, I'm just reminded of the fact of Jeremiah when he's preaching and he just got to the place where he just wanted to shut up. <laughs> he, he, even called, he even thought for a moment that God was lying to him. Because things were getting so bad, and he just couldn't, he just couldn't hold off. He just couldn't refrain from preaching because it just burned within him. But that was a gift that God poured into his life. And it wasn't necessarily something he was good at. If you read his calling in Jeremiah chapter 1, you know how much he fought it. I cannot speak. I am a child. So when God extends a gift, it is completely different than, than having an ability or a talent. But I will say this, that I do believe that God provides not only the gifts within the church, but also provides people that are talented and people that have abilities. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with using talent and ability, but they do not replace the work of the Spirit of God as far as the gifts of the Spirit. I want to talk a little bit about the gifts of the Spirit over the next couple of weeks, and I want to start here in the book of Peter only because, well, really because most of the teaching is in Paul's epistles, and I wanted to start outside of Paul's epistles. And because um, this is a great, these this couple of verses here are, are a great reminder, as you can see in your outline here, our attitude towards the gift. And <clears throat> and there's some particular phrasing here that I think is really important for us to really get a grip on. And you're there in First, in first Peter chapter 4 and verse number 10. And you can see here the purpose is to minister. It's, it's a very clear statement uh, that he makes in verse number 10. As every man hath received the gift. Now, P Peter's writing to believers, and he's talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit of God and what comes along with that, with that package deal. You got the Holy Spirit. If you're here tonight and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, 
then along with that comes the gift, gifts of the Spirit. It's a gift to give the Spirit, and with that comes spiritual gifts. Every one of us has spiritual gifts, some more than others. Without exception, without exception. Every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another. And so the, the main purpose of the gift, of course, is to minister. Now, of course, Jesus set the prime example of what it means to be a minister. And I'm just going to read that verse of Scripture if you're, you're familiar with. It's from Matthew 20, verse number 28, that says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, to give his life a ransom for many. The, the word minister is a simple word. It means to serve. This is the perspective that every child of God should have. To serve. I want to serve. How can I serve? Who can I minister to? And, and so that should always be our goal, to minister. So part of, the, uh, of ministering, of course, is the exercising of these gifts. Paul mentions that in several of his epistles. And in particular, when he's writing to Rome, he says, listen, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys because I want, I want to minister to you. I want to exercise the spiritual gifts that God has given me. And so he understood he had a purpose. The purpose is always to minister. And so secondly, the direction, of course, in that, that verse we just read there, so even so we, uh, again, 1 Peter 4.10, even uh, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. Direction, of course, is one to another. Very simple thing. Um, the focus here, of course, is the Lord's church amongst believers, the body of Christ. And, and certainly I do understand as we exercise the spiritual gifts, they, go, they extend beyond just the church walls, and I, I do know that. But I do want to remind you, as we started Ephesians chapter 4, as the, the, the gifts is given and we talk about the, you know, the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And we're talking about a body of believers, a local congregation, this, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so we're talking about ministering to one another. Um, no, certainly, let, let me just, uh, for instance, like evangelism. You think, well, evangelism, of course, isn't that outside of the body? Well, certainly it is, but yet evangelism, does, not, does that not benefit the body? When, when folks, I mean, we're, the Great Commission tells us to go, right, into all the world, right? Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to observe all things. The extension of the gospel outside of the church walls brings a benefit, and not just numerically. It's not just a matter of making our church grow numerically, but it benefits the body by, uh, by introducing more folks to do the work of the ministry because everyone that gets saved has the Holy Spirit of God. If they don't have the Spirit of God, they're none of His, right? It's everyone that gets saved has the Spirit of God. So everyone that gets saved and has the Spirit of God, what else do they have? Gifts of the Spirit. It's kind of like you're bringing into the congregation more benefits of the Spirit of God. Certainly, folks need to be discipled. Certainly, they need to be taught. That's what we're given instructions to do in the Great Commission, Right? Teach them to observe all things with the understanding as of the perfecting of the saints, they, then they do the work of the ministry. As folks are brought into the congregation, there's more folks to do the work of the ministry. It's not a matter of just numbers. It's not a matter of filling pews. It's a matter of the work of God. And then it benefits the body of Christ. And then we're able to do more of what God has given us to do and we're able to advance the kingdom of God even further than we had before because we are ministering. But the direction of the spiritual gifts are to one another. We benefit one another. If you have a gift of giving, 
You think, well, you know, what are we talking about? Tithes and offerings? Well, certainly. But, you know, we're all instructed to, to do those things. But, you know, some people, they're extremely generous and they're, they're a benefit to one another. They're, they're giving in a lot of ways. And I'm not talking about just dollars and cents. Other folks have the gift of ministering. A gift of ministering is, is, a, is a servant's attitude. And I'll tell you, when you have somebody in the church that has a servant's attitude, it benefits everybody. They are always there. And they're helping and they are, they're sensitive to people's needs. And, they're, they're, and we're, we're going to talk about a lot of the gifts, so I don't want to just go down the list tonight. But do you, do you see what Peter's saying? That this gift is given so that we can minister one to another. We also see the responsibility. It's mentioned in again in verse, um, uh, in verse number 10. It says, even so minister, this is again back in 1 Peter 4.10, even so minister the same one toward another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The responsibility is to be a Steward, steward. There's a great portion of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to read uh, first four verses of that chapter, 1 Corinthians 4, verses 1 through 4, that says this. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing of myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And what Paul is talking about here is he's talking about stewardship. Now, stewardship requires, and, and of course, we're supposed to be good stewards, as is said there in 1 Peter 4, good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That word manifold means different, diverse, it's multiple. Uh, and so the grace of God is different for all of us. Um, it is, um, as he as, as God is, is dealing with each one of us as individuals, as he pours out his spirit, it's the same spirit of God, and I realize that. But we all have different, different gifts. The Lord burns us in different areas. The Lord guides us and directs us concerning different things. And we, we've talked about this many times before, you know, when the Bible speaks about you know, being of one accord and of one mind. It doesn't mean we all agree on everything, and it doesn't mean we all think the same way about stuff, but it does mean that we have a singular purpose. But, you know, when we're talking about manifold, you know, when the, when the Holy Spirit of God burdened my heart to do particular things, that may not necessarily be the same burden he puts on your heart. And, you know, Paul the Apostle, I mean, all throughout his life, he's called to be an apostle to the Gentiles, and yet he has this burden for the nation of Israel, which he just, he just never lets go of. And so it's very different. Then you have the other apostles that are, you know, primarily ministering to Jewish congregations. That's because that's what God called them to do. Were they wrong? Was, was Paul wrong for going to the Gentiles? Matter of fact, there were some folks back in the church in Jerusalem that thought he was. But, you know, God burdened him for that. It's a different calling, different burden, different set of gifts that were necessary for that work. And, and what Paul is talking about here, that, this is a very interesting passage because he's dealing with the church there in Corinth and they're judging him about things. He doesn't go into all the details of what all the judgment was about. I, you know, I was thinking about that today, and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, here, here is, you know, it's a church, and it's steeped in, in uh, you know, you're in a major city in, in the Greek peninsula. There's a lot of philosophy going on. I, you know, I'm sure there's a couple guys in the church thinking to themselves, you know, we should start a, we should start a philosophy school. Wouldn't that be? We could reach a lot more people in our community if we started a, like a Plato school 
or a school to Socrates or something. Oh, man. And we'll just, we'll teach and we'll have this, you know, great uh, school going on. And I'm sure we can draw a lot of people in. And this guy, you know, and I know, I know he was a great apostle and he preached. We all got saved. But he's really narrow-minded when it comes to the Greek philosophies. He, he just really doesn't understand the approach that we can have. And, you know, he's like, why are you judging me? <laughs> you know, God laid a burden on my heart to preach Christ and him crucified. And you're going to judge me concerning the burden that God put on my heart? He said, I don't even, I don't, he, he said, I don't even judge myself on this. I, all I'm simply doing is doing what God burdened my heart to do. Okay, first of all, stewardship requires faithfulness, okay? That's what it says, it required a steward of man be found faithful. So faithfulness is required. But also stewardship requires accountability. Who are we accountable to? We're accountable to God. Now certainly it is true that we need to stay within the confines of the teachings of the Word of God. But every one of us have been called to do different things. And God has laid a burden on each one of us. And we all don't have the same burdens for different, for different, in different areas. You know, it's, it's, you know, Paul deals with that in, in 1 Corinthians when he's using that great illustration about eyes and ears and noses. You know, we're not all eyeballs. We don't all, you know, have the same. Why aren't, why aren't you an eyeball? We all should be eyeballs. And that's just not the way it is. How come you don't have the same burden I have? How come you don't feel the same passion that I have for certain things? Does it make you wrong? Am I the only one that's right? How come you're not doing what I'm doing? Don't you know it's important? You must not be right with God because you're not serving him the way that I'm serving him. And that's what Paul's sorting out here in, in, uh, in 1 Corinthians. People had some serious issues and a lot of judgment towards one another. Part of stewardship certainly is faithfulness, but it's also accountability. We're accountable to God. And we've been given a gift and that gift is a gift from God specifically designed for us, you as an individual, with burdens, with passions, with abilities, in order to carry out what God wants you to do. And it's going to be different than other people. And we don't judge one another over that. Back in our passage here, we're in 1 Peter chapter 4, one other point underneath this, um, um, in reference to this gift, not only do we have the purpose is to minister and the direction is to minister to one another, and the responsibility, of course, is to be a steward. There in verse number 11, it goes on, and if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, and if any man minister, let him do it with, um, as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The goal is that God would be glorified. That's the goal. It is, it is not about, um, it's, it's not about promotion of self. The, the, the giving of the spiritual gifts, any kind of gift that you have from God, is not about you. It doesn't advance your activities in order to, to, in order to make you, you know, more visible to others. It is not about recognition of your uh, talents or your accomplishments. It is all about God. Uh, in the book of Ephesians, of course, we start in Ephesians chapter 4, but I'm just going to read the last two verses of, of Ephesians chapter 3. Verse number 20 and 21 that says this, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now, 
let me, let me just make sure we understand. He is able to do exceeding abundantly. Okay, it's not talking about us doing things exceeding abundant, okay? Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What is that power that worketh in us? It's that gift, right? It's the Holy Spirit of God. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. It is all about God receiving glory. He is empowered. He is given the Holy Spirit. He is given all the, all the package deal that comes along with it. And it's not to promote us. It's not to sh- you know, ha- make us a, show, uh, you know, a showcase like, look at me, look what I can do. It is all about him receiving glory as the Holy Spirit works through us. That power is the Holy Spirit, and whatever is accomplished, is, it's, it's what he does. And all, glory goes to him. In that passage here in 1 Peter chapter 4, um, you know, Peter mentions um, two particular gifts. Uh, we're, we'll be talking about some of this as we go over the next couple of weeks, but Peter mentions particularly in verse number 11, um, talking about uh, if, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of, uh, of God. And uh, so we talk about this idea of speaking or preaching, uh, proclaiming. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that and try to define some terms a little over the next week or so. Um, he also talks about ministering, again, in verse number 11, uh, if any man minister, let him do it. Um, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Okay, the word ministering, serving, and there is a gift the Holy Spirit of God gives us to serve. You know, there are other gifts that you know that are mentioned in the scriptures. We're going to be looking at that over the next couple of weeks. Um, and so, um, let, let me just say this: I am I am not one to put the list out there and give you some type of you know, um, scorecard where you have to go through and try to figure out your gifts. You can, you could probably Google that and, and get some kind of chart. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of person. Okay. Um, the way I've viewed the spiritual gifts is simply this. You begin to surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit of God in your life and, and desire to serve the Lord. The Lord will make those gifts evident to you. And certainly will make them evident to others. Um, it, I, it's one of those things. It doesn't surprise me that someone else doesn't go to another believer and said, you know, I really believe you have the gift of, uh, because they see it. Um, they see it in abundance in your life because that is how God is working through you. I, I don't think you need to take some kind of test to figure it out. I do believe that God makes things evident. That being said, you are a child of God. You are gifted by God through his Holy Spirit for the purpose of edifying this body of Christ. God wants to use you and will use you because he put the Spirit of God in you, that gift, with the spiritual gift or gifts for a purpose, not to sit idle, not to be buried in the ground, not to be fearful, not to be squandered, not to be boasted upon, but to be used in his church for his glory. God has given the gifts to the church for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of this body of Christ. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for the great blessing of your Holy Spirit, which you poured out upon your church, empowered for the work of the ministry that you've given us to do. But Father, in so doing this 
this indwelling of your spirit in the lives of each individual believer has brought to even this congregation such a manifold display of your grace. And I, I, I ask, Lord, that you would utilize each and every individual here to exercise the empowering that you have given. And Father, that we would all be about this wonderful task of ministering to one another, of edifying this body. Help us, dear Lord, to do the work of the ministry according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Let's bow our heads.